Hello and welcome to today's Advancing Your Marketing Career webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate. The presentation will last for approximately 40 minutes. You'll be able to send text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the chat box of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation and we'll collect and address as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end. Unfortunately, we don't send slides of the presentation. However, the webinar will be available for you to watch on demand via our Content Hub Exchange in the next couple of working days. I would now like to hand you over to Kiran Kapoor from Cambridge Marketing College, who will be presenting today's webinar. Thank you, Sarah, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the, this webinar. We're going to be talking about advancing your marketing career, specifically to do with the uh, marketing certificate in professional CIM certificate in professional marketing at level four and I'm going to cover um, the benefits of studying the sort of job roles that you might like to um, look at this achieving the entry requirements how you can get started and there will be plenty of time for questions at the end but as Sarah said you can type your questions as you go as you go through as well so um, the first thing I wanted to do was introduce myself. Then I'm going to, um, we're going to have a couple of polls where I get to find out who, who you are. Um, and then we'll start looking at the qualification itself. So my name is Kiran Kapoor. I'm the CEO of the Cambridge Marketing College. We're one of the CIM's uh, leading marketing colleges. Um, and we've taught the CIM qualification since 1991. So we like to think we know what we're doing. I started at the college um, nearly 20 years ago um, as a tutor for the CIM, and I also was a CIM examiner for over 12 years. So I know the CIM both as a tutor side, but also as, as, an, in, as an insider, as an examiner. So let me ask you about you, and you're about to get a poll coming to you. And what I really want to know at this stage is whether you're in marketing yet. Because quite often at level four, people are either at the beginning of their marketing career or they've been in marketing a little while, but they now want to get a qualification. Or sometimes people have been working in other areas. Quite often accountants, I think, see the light and decide that they want to become marketers. So the first poll that's coming towards you is to find out just how many years experience that you have. Just a little pause while we wait for the results to come through. Oh, there we go. So I've got, um, oh, half of you have got uh, less than two years experience and half of you have got more than two years experience. So that's, that's quite helpful. But n there's nobody here at the moment who hasn't yet come into marketing. That's great. And then my next question is going to be a geographic question that I'd like to know where you are geographically. Um, as I said, we're one of the CIM's leading colleges and we teach students from around the world. I think at the last count, we'd had students for 114 countries. So I'd really like to know whether you are in the UK, whether you're in Europe, or whether you are outside of Europe, because that will help me um, the way, uh, talk about the qualification in a way that is relevant to you. So that poll should be coming towards you now. Okay, and that's quite useful. You're all in the UK. <laughs> Fine. That, gives me, um, that uh, gives me a good steer. Thank you very much for doing that. So let's um, deal with the first question I normally get, which is what on earth does level four mean? What is a level four qualification? So levels are related to education levels. Um, and for, le for the UK, a level four is basically the first year that you go to university. It's your first year of study after A level, so often the first year of study after, after um, school. And um, it can also be equivalent to a foundation degree or an HND. Um, there is a European qualifications framework, um, and if you were doing that, that links all the qualifications around Europe on one standard framework, and that in fact gives it would be equivalent to a European qualifications framework level five, and um, the Scottish levels are slightly different, so it's equivalent to a Scottish level seven and eight. But that's what a level four means. It's nothing, um, it's not very complicated. It just explains the type of level that qualification is taught at. 
So let's have a look at who should take the CIM qualification. Um, predominantly, we're, it's, um, and I'm, I'm guessing since most of you have, are in marketing and have some experience, you're probably already marketing assistants looking to become marketing executives. So it covers off the, um, the beginning levels of marketing, um, some of the basic marketing theories like the product life cycle, um, like how to put together some communications plans. Um, how to do um, a certain level of digital marketing, for example. That's the level that the CIM qualification, certificate qualification covers. So you, it's marketing assistants wanted to become marketing executives. Um, some people that are non-marketers are looking to come into marketing and marketers with experience who want to gain a qualification. And the little quote I've given you on the top right-hand corner of the slide is actually taken from the CIM's own survey, and I'll be quoting that extensively as we go through. Um, and this is someone who's um, working as a marketing executive, and as she says, the certificate um, was invaluable and it get, was a great addition to her CV. So one of the questions I get asked is, in marketing, is it necessary to have a qualification? And this actually became a huge discussion a couple of years ago from a commentator called Mark Ritson, who um, writes in Marketing Week. And if you don't read Marketing Week, I recommend it. And if you don't know Mark Ritson's com column, do look for it. He's quite often controversial, but he has some very good ideas and makes some very good comments about the state of marketing. So he started a, a column where he said, maybe it's just me, but shouldn't an expert in marketing be trained in marketing? Um, you need a qualification to be qualified. And this sparked a, a huge discussion within the industry about whether marketers needed a qualification or whether it was something that you learned as you went on the job. Um, and I'm quoting this again from people that responded to Mark Ritson's article. Um, and here's somebody saying that um, experience is what matters, and you, of course you can learn on the job, but a formal qualification is helpful. And another example of somebody going, I'm the first to encourage you to break rules, but it needs to be a conscious decision. So you have to know the rules before you can break them. And that's, again, what a qualification gives you. So let's look at some of the advantages of taking a qualification. So I've given you six reasons to be CIM accredited. It does make your CV stand out. That was the, um, there was also a quote from the, the lady earlier saying that she felt that it, her CV stood out because it shows your commitment. You have committed time to studying. You are committing time to learning more about your career. It demonstrates that you have a level of knowledge. Everybody who has a CIM level four qualification has a similar level of knowledge. That's very useful for an employer when they're looking to, to recruit somebody. And it's a great way to fill in any gaps in your experience. So if you have learnt on the job, it's a really useful way of saying, yep, I've learnt this on the job, but here are the things that I hadn't learnt on the job, but I now know the theory. Um, I've given you another quote here um, that the CIM certificate definitely helps me stand out and I feel it adds to my credibility. And I think credibility is a very key word there. Studying fits around you and most importantly around your organization. You can study alongside your day job and that's really important. Um, and the assessments for all CIM qualifications do relate to your organization. So it's all very well learning about the product life cycle, but it means much more if you can then relate it to your own organization's products. And that's very much the way the CIM um, qualification and the assessments are designed to do. Pay. Surveys have shown that those who have a CIM qualification can earn 10% more than non-members over the course of their career. That's quite significant. And it's worth the pain, and there is some pain in getting any qualification, particularly when you are already working and then you are studying alongside. But there are some definite benefits and rewards that come out from that. And the next one would be your promotion prospects. Um, again, the CIM survey did um, asked a panel of senior marketers and found that 87% of them held a CIM qualification. So the message is very clear. In order to become more senior, you need qualifications. And number five is that the qualifications knowledge is very practical. The CIM courses are 
created from feedback with employers. And so the CIM asks employers what skills and knowledge they need their marketing team to have. And they use that to create both the syllabus for the qualification and also for the assessments for the qualification. So that you know that what you're gaining is very practical tools and techniques that you can use immediately. And lastly, the CIM qualifications are internationally recognized. Um, so they are recognized, if you see your career as wanting to move internationally or wanting to work in multinational businesses, having a CIM stamp on your CV really does matter. Um, recruiters will look at you knowing that you have a qualification with great credentials that they do recognize. So a little bit on the qualification itself. The qualification has got three modules. And there are two modules that you must pass, and then you have a choice of, two, of one of two other modules. And you have to pass one of those. So in overall, you're passing three modules. Um, you can take each module as um, a standalone award. So if you decide that for whatever reason you don't want to do all three modules, you can choose one and gain an award in that, and that still gives you a qualification. If you pass all three, you then get a you again get the CIM certificate in professional marketing. Modules cover marketing theory, and as I keep stressing, it is applied to real life organizations. And the assessments are based on your organization, so they are very relevant to what, that, to what you do. And you will learn theories, you will learn techniques, and you will learn how to, um, how to apply those in different industries. One of the questions I get asked um, frequently is, what is the entry criteria? So um, here are the various entry criteria that allow you to take the certificate. So one is to get the CIM Level 3 certificate in, a mar in marketing, um, which is a qualification um, for UK that's based at A level. A level is Level 3. Any other relevant Level 3 qualifications, so relevant here would be something in business or marketing. A UK degree or an international equivalent in a, in a non-marketing subject. Um, the international baccalaureate equivalent to level three and above. Or you've got experience within marketing, and um, some of you had got over two years' experience within marketing. Um, the CIM suggests at least one year, so if you've got two years, you should most definitely uh, be eligible. Um, and then there is a diagnostic assessment that the CIM offers. Um, that's a series of online questions that you log in and take. And at the end of it, it will give you a recommendation as to the right level for you to study. Um, that's why it's called diagnostic. But if you, if you pass that and it says, yes, you're ready to study on level four, that's sufficient to say, can I apply to the CIM certificate? One of the other questions I get asked a lot is, how long does it take? Well, most people take between 12 and 18 months for the three modules, so therefore roughly six months per module. Each module is assessed in April, July, or December every year. So depending on when you start, um, so we are recording this in June, so people starting now would go for the December assessment for their first module. Um, um, and if, uh, if December wasn't suitable, they could then go for the following year's the April assessment. And you should assume, um, we normally say six to eight hours. I've put eight hours on the slide because most of us say we'll do eight hours and then we don't quite manage to achieve it. So if you assume it's going to be a minimum of an hour a day, that's a good way to think about studying successfully for the CIM certificate. And we find people um, study um, sometimes in lunch hours at, at work. I have students that go in to work early and then block off time so that they can study in a meeting room when it's quiet. Um, I have other students that can study in the evening. Um, others um, study on their way to work if they, if they travel by public transport. Or it's, that tends to be easier if you can study in bite-sized chunks rather than trying to set aside, I'm going to spend the whole of Sunday studying, and I'm going to do all seven or eight hours in that day. 
because you won't. Nobody can study for eight hours at a stretch. You get bored, you end up doing other things, or you end up just not concentrating and taking it in. So assume an hour a day, but actually think about breaking that into chunks. When can I start? So it does depend how you want to study. There are various ways of studying, and the CIM has a number of study centers around the UK and internationally. And I've given you here the link to the CIM Study Center Finder, um, cim.co.uk slash study centers. And the, the little image on the right-hand side of your screen is taken from that. So you can see that it's, it's a geographic map. You put in where you are. You say the type of studying that you want to do. And I'll talk about that in a second. And then the Study Center Finder will, will select some study centers for you that are close to you that meet your criteria. So the various ways that you can study, you can study face-to-face -face in classes. That can be a very useful way of studying. You will meet other people doing the same qualification as you. They are usually working for different types of organizations and different types of industries. And that can be very valuable because you start to learn um, how the um, theories and techniques apply not only to your own company, but also to other people and to other people's industries. You can also study by online learning. Um, some organizations will, will offer purely online learning. In, and um, some, some study centers offer a mixture of the two. So if you are looking to study from classes, then you need to wait for the next set of timetable classes for whichever study center you have chosen. If you're looking to study online, then you should be able to start straight away because um, most online learning allow is on a roll-on, roll-off. Blended learning, you may have the benefits of doing the roll-on, roll-off, but you will also have to wait for the classes to be, to be scheduled. Online learning can work extremely well if you like to study um, by yourself, if you are very organized in your study, and if um, you travel a lot or if you have a, um, you're not likely to be able to find time to attend classes or just you prefer the convenience of carrying your studies around with you at all times and be able to study in odd moments. Online learning can work very well. Um, I'm very passionate about it, but I would be the first to say it does not suit everybody. Um, so choose your method. Go to the CIM Study Center. Select the qualification that you want to do, which is on the left-hand side of the, of the screen of the study, cent, study Center Finder. Put in your geographic location, and as I said, the CIM will do the work for you and will um, give you a, a list of study centers that are suitable for your criteria. The next question I'm normally asked is, how much does it cost? Um, you need to think about a total cost, which is the cost of tuition plus the CIM's fees and they are separate. So you decide the method you want to study, online classes or blended. You choose your study center. The study center will have their own tuition fees, and you pay those to the study center for the, work that, for the tuition work that they are giving you. Then on top of that, you pay to the CIM a membership each year, it's a studying membership, which is currently £60 per year. You also need to pay the CIM an assessment fee, and that's basically the fee to cover the cost of marking the assessments. Um, for the UK, that is um, £145 per module. Certain overseas countries, it's 125 but for all of you online at the moment, you're looking at the 145 per module. You don't have to pay all of that together. You would pay the studying membership fee immediately, and then you pay for your assessment fees um, by deadlines that the CIM sets, but coming up to the assessments. So you haven't got to find um, the membership and the study center fees and the assessment fees all up front. So some tips for success. Um, the most important one is to commit the time. Every so often we get somebody who is very keen to study, usually very keen, very enthusiastic, wants to do absolutely everything, and is going to um, study with us, get a promotion, and move house. 
the whole that as a combination is a combination for a lot of stress not enjoying the studying not getting the best out of it and ending up feeling very disillusioned by it all so try to choose a time when there isn't too much else going on in your life um, and commit the time to study i said it was an hour a day um, you need to be prepared to put that time in it and you need to be putting that time in regularly it isn't you're not taking a degree we could we all did this at, at university where we left it until the last minute and then studied overnight and then somehow managed to get through it doesn't work like that not when you are studying and working at the same time so first and most importantly commit to the time get your manager on board um, some students are funded by their companies other students choose or um, other students pay for themselves either because they've chosen to do that or because their companies don't pay pay for them but either way ideally get your ma your line manager on board because they are the key to you getting information about the company. They're key to you being able to talk to them about what you're learning and keep getting a check and an information on what you are learning and how it relates to your organization. And also, you're doing this to, partly because you want to get the, the knowledge, but also to enhance your career. Your manager should know that you are doing this. Do create some space for study. Now, on the slide I've written at home, but actually that could be at work, it could be at the local library, it could be at a friend's house. It doesn't matter so long as you have a space that is dedicated to the study. While distance learning and online learning are wonderful because you can study everywhere, if you try to study everywhere and you are constantly distracted, that is not a good way to learn. And I know that's obvious, but it's surprising how often people forget that when they're in the throes of studying. So you need space to study. If you're going to study on your commute to work, that's absolutely fine, but you will still need quiet time to reflect on things that isn't around um, when you've got other people around you. And do enlist help from colleagues, from friends, and from family. Friends and family are going to have to be quite sympathetic to the fact that you keep locking yourself away to study. Um, when you're coming up to an assessment time, you will need more than eight hours a week. You will need time to think about your assessment, to write your assessment, or to revise for an exam. They need to be very sympathetic to that happening. Um, getting help from your colleagues is really useful because you can then talk about what you've learnt. Most, many marketers have taken the CIM qualification. Seek them out. They will be very sympathetic, and they usually pour information at you. The other um, final tip I would give you is keep, keep, keep your eye on the prize. That we all have a point midway through study when we wonder why on earth we're doing it, and there's many other more exciting things we can go and do with our lives. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep remembering those six reasons why you were signing up to do the CIM certificate in the first place. That will really help your motivation as you go through. And that is what I wanted to cover in this webinar. So um, you've got the slide coming up gives you places that you can take um, your questions to. Um, with the CIM, there's telephone numbers and also um, email addresses. But um, Sarah, are there any questions for me to take? So thank you, Kieran. Um, we're now going to answer some of the questions that have been submitted. I just wanted to remind the audience that you can still submit questions uh, via the chat box in the attendee control panel. So just a couple of questions to start with, um, Kieran. So once somebody's signed up um, to study the uh, certificate qualification, how long do they have to complete it? It will partly depend on um, their study centre and how long the study centre gives for the um, for tuition. So for, uh, for the college, for the certificate, we would expect you to complete it within 18 months. If there were reasons why you couldn't, um, you know, ill health being one of them, um, occasionally um, you know, changing jobs and what have you, so long as we know, we will often extend it. But that does depend on your study centre and their terms and conditions. So I would check that when you sign up. The CIM's own ruling, and Sarah, you may know this better than me, I think is five years from um, starting and becoming a studying membership to actually completing the certificate. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I guess the, the other thing to point out really is that um, you don't have to study them all in, in one go because, as you mentioned, the, the modules can be done um, by an award basis. 
Yes. So um, it's not necessary that you would have to sign up and do the whole qualification in one package. You could do it individually if, if that worked better for you. Okay, so the next question uh, here is, um, are the, um, would these um, assessments, are they exams? How would um, somebody be assessed? Okay, there are um, different types of assessments for different modules, but there is a multiple choice exam um, which is a, a current, it allows you two hours to take it, though I have to say most people manage to complete it um, in less time than that. Um, and that's literally, it's literally, it's a multiple choice on any part of the syllabus. So you do need to gen up your syllabus before you, the whole syllabus before you take that. The other modules are, um, and I said there were two mandatory, one of the mandatory ones is the exam. The other mandatory one is an assignment, as are the two elective modules. You have to take one of the two electives. Um, and they are all done by an assignment, which means the CIM sets a question, um, and, and then you answer that question. You write a report in, as though you were writing a report for work, but you write a report on that based on your company um, answering the question that the CIM has set. And they're usually between two and a half to 4,000 words, the, the assessments. So it's a significant piece of work, but it's not, you're not writing a, um, a whole thesis or anything like that. It's a, it's a standard report length if you're writing a report for work. Thank you, Kiran. Um, and would you say it's essential for somebody to actually be working to be able to complete the, the qualification? That's a very good question. It's better to be working because you have an organization to um, write about. However, I do find that sometimes people come to us because they have been made redundant. Occasionally, um, taking the qualification is part of a redundancy package. Um, and what we then say is, either write on an organization that you know about, or even ask to research an organization you'd quite like to go and work for, and it gives you a chance to go and talk to them. Um, most of us can write about some organization, either one we currently work in, or um, an organization, you, um, people sometimes volunteer for charities, and they can write about the charity. So there are always ways of accessing an organization. It's just easier if you've got one that you're currently working for, because you've got access to the information you need. Thank you, Kiran. Um, so we have another question here. Um, somebody would like to know, if they sign up for, on, uh, for the online course, how long will they be able to use the resources from the study centre? So would that be, I assume that would be for the length of their study time with you, is that correct? It would, not, it would be um, for the length of the study time. And again, that will vary from study centre to study centre. For us, the certificate, we would expect around 18 months um, but we would also set it so that it was the end of the next assessment period. So if you're 18 months actually finished at the end of um, October, you would find, in fact, we extended you to the end of December because that would cover the December ass assessment period. So it may not be quite, uh, quite a hard and fast rule, um, but usually it's access to the online learning zone while you are studying. Great, thank you. Um, another question here. So for somebody with a degree and just under two years experience, would you recommend the certificate or the diploma qualification? Okay, it depends what the degree is in and if there is any element of marketing or business within that degree. Um, if there was, then that's part of a conversation I would normally have and go, well, you've done a bit of marketing, so you've got the basic marketing theory and you've got two years experience, you might be relevant ready for the diploma, we would normally um, then encourage the diagnostic test, the CIM's test. The point about that is it makes certain that you've got the right level of marketing theory knowledge before you, um, take, before you start the qualification, because there's no point in starting a diploma if you haven't got some of the basic marketing theory, because you're just going to flounder. Um, so the diagnostic test really is very, very useful, and it's not scary. It's just an online, a little online test um, that checks the, your your theory knowledge. Thank you, Kiran. Um, another question here is: um, Is the assignment um, something you work on as uh, an individual or with a team of uh, people or people on your course? Definitely as an individual. You will write it as an individual, and you will hand it in and be marked as an indiv as an individual. Um, by all means, discuss it within a team. Um, and it, I, 
when I teach, I, I love it when people are, are sitting down at, uh, often in the coffee break talking about how they've tackled a part of the assignment and how they've related it to their own organization. And I think that's hugely beneficial, but um, you will write it very definitely as an individual. Great, thank you. Uh, another question here, um, are there practice exam questions available? There are. The CIM have published um, online exam questions that are that are um, available and obviously the answers because there's no point in just having the questions if you haven't got the answers. Um, and they have been released and are available to studying members and you'll also find that your um, study centre will have access to those. So yes, there are plenty of opportunities to practice ready for the exam. Thank you. Um, somebody has asked if they can take a break once they have started studying. Um, that's that's an interesting one. Um, yes, you can. Um, if you know that that's likely to happen, I would suggest perhaps taking the award route. So just do one module at a time. Um, the other option would be, but yes, of course, if you if you start and something comes up and for some reason you can't continue, we're always um, open and sympathetic to people taking a break. Um, We've had maternity leave, um, sickness. Uh, you know, there are a number of reasons why people might need, to, but legitimate reasons why people might need to take a break. I would suggest pressure of work is not one of them. You you need to know that you can carve out the time before you sign up. But life is life, and things happen, and things get in the way. Um, so that's certainly for our study centre. I cannot imagine that any other study centre would be different. But again, you might want to check before you signed up. Great, thank you. And I think we have our final question here, unless anybody else um, would like to post any questions. Um, can I sit for the level three and level four exams or assignments um, without enrolling into a study centre? No, absolutely not. And that is against the CIM's rules. You have to be sponsored by a study centre. Um, so that's for the exams or the assignments. You must come through a study centre. But it's a good question, and I can see why people ask it, but that, mm. that is the CIM rule. Excellent. Thank you, um, Kieran. So I think we may have come to the end of our questions today. So we had quite a few there. Um, so I'd like to say a big thank you to Kieran for presenting on this webinar, and also thank you to our audience for attending. Um, once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation, um, and we would really appreciate it if you could provide us with your uh, feedback. So on behalf of CIM, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all. Bye-bye.